Hello, my name is Robert Dean Steele, and this is your Cornerstone Community Church Service for September the 1st. Hard to believe it's already September. And I am so looking forward to being with you today and also as well to open our time with prayer. So Father, thank you today for the wonderful opportunity that we have, Lord, to worship you and also as well, Lord, enjoy the presence of the Lord. Now we ask your blessing upon this time and also the word that is presented, the songs that are sung, and also as well, Lord, the prayers that are offered. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I do want to give you an invitation to our in-person service that will be held, of course, today at 11 a.m. We meet at Cornerstone Hall. That's number 6 Tache Street in St. Albert. Our doors open at 1045 and our service starts at 11 a.m. And we would love to have you join us that service. Great is your faithfulness, O oh God. You wrestle with the sinners, wrestlers high. You lead us by still waters into the sea. And nothing can keep us apart. So remember. Actually, I heard back in the 90s, and it was such a powerful song, and it's simply called, of course, Jesus, Lover of My Soul. And the very first time I heard it was from Hillsong. Jesus, lover of my soul, Jesus, I will never let you go.
God is so powerful and so true that you and I have someone in our lives that is, of course, leading and guiding and direct us. Well, it's time for us to go to the Word of God. And today, we're going to be spending some time in John chapter 15. If you have been following us, then you know that we've been spending time in the Upper Room Discourse. It's kind of the last will and testament of Jesus Christ. The final things that he wanted to say to his disciples. So let's look at what Jesus had to say today in John chapter 15. So, Father, thank you today for the Word of God. And we pray that, Lord, over the next few moments, as we spend time in your Word, it will reveal to us, Lord, three important truths. So help us to receive it now. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, Jesus starts at verse number 24, and he says this, If I had not done among them what no one else did, they would not be guilty of sin. But now they have seen these miracles, and they have hated both me and my father. But this was to fulfill what was written in the law. They hated me with no reason. So Jesus brings out to his disciples, he says, listen, guys, the reason why the world dislikes me, the world hates me, is because I have done something among them that no one else has ever done. So what did Jesus do? Well, first of all, Jesus represented completely and totally who God is. Jesus would say, if you see the Father, you see me. And if you see my you see me, you see the Father. Basically, Jesus was a physical representation of what the Father would say, what the Father would do if he was walking among us today. Jesus did all of those things. Now, the interesting thing was, is that Jesus would spend time with the Lord every single day to get his plan and purpose. Jesus wanted to glorify his father. That's why even at the age of 12, Jesus says, where else would I be but in my father's house doing my father's business? So we need to recognize that. That also comes with consequences. That means that you're not always going to be popular in the world because the simple fact is this world operates on selfish ambition and covetousness. This world operates under the realm of the enemy and his enemy is uh, his mode of an operation is to rob, kill and destroy. And he uses accusation, temptation, deception, intimidation and manipulation to accomplish his realm. This realm this world operates on pride, pleasure, possession. These are constant contaminants that you and I face. Jesus perfectly navigated this world because he was, of course, the Son of God. But more importantly, Jesus did things that nobody else had ever done. Jesus cast out demons. Jesus raised the dead. Jesus fed 5,000 and 4,000 people. Jesus exposed, of course, both the good and the bad in people by how he interacted. And Jesus would have been considered a bit of a religious uh, eccentric today if we were looking at his operation. Jesus simply said, if I had not been among them, they would not be guilty. You see, Jesus exposed people for what they were and also, as well, he wanted them to repent. Now, today, of course, we have a opposite direction, where now we have proclaimers of the word say, listen, you can be anything you want. Come in and join our church, and you don't have to change at all. You know, it was interesting, though, when Jesus came out of the temptation in the wilderness, the first thing he said to the people was, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. You and I we live in a contrary world. We're not operating the same way the world operates. And so when um, Jesus came in, he exposed their motives. He exposed their ideas. He exposed their attitude. He showed them what sin was all about. When you came into the face of Jesus, you could not say, I don't know what God is like. I don't know what sin is like because Jesus who was the perfect personification and also as well the incarnation of God, exposed them. He says, they're guilty. 
and they know that they are guilty. They have been exposed. They have been shown for what they were. The young man, for example, who came to Jesus, that, that young, rich, young ruler, and uh, he said, hey, I'm willing to follow you. Jesus is perfect. The only thing I want you to do is sell all that you have and give it to the poor. Now, the Bible says the young man went away because he was rich. And even though he wanted to follow Jesus, he wasn't willing to give up what he had. And so that was his downfall. And that was what he was exposed to. The Pharisees who came, the Sadducees, the scribes, and all those church leaders or those synagogue leaders, Jesus exposed their hypocrisy. And he said, woe to you. So that's what Jesus did. And because of that, they, but that not that they've seen the miracles. He says they have hated both me and the Father because the simple fact is the miracles that Jesus did, the parables that he told, the lifestyle that he represented him was contrary even to the religious world, and the religious world was incredibly regulated. They followed certain, you know, standards and certain ideas, and it was it had all the trappings of piety and, of course, holiness. But the reality was they weren't holy and they weren't pious. They were filled, as Jesus said, they're good looking on the outside, but inside they're dead men's bones. So Jesus showed that and Jesus' miracles. I mean, here's a perfect example. There's a guy in a synagogue, okay? He's got a withered hand and Jesus said, listen, I'll prove to you that I am who said, he says, reach out your hand. So the man reached out his hand and he was healed, thus exposing both the hypocrisy and also the fact that the rulers of the synagogue were more concerned about Jesus, you know, abiding by their ideas of what the Sabbath was than seeing someone healed. Jesus showed it through his miracles, walking on the water, feeding the 5,000, feeding the 4,000, all exposing to the fact that, guess what? God was alive. And he says, because of that, actually doing miracles of good, the world not only hated him, but his father as well. Because remember, Jesus was doing the will of his father. Then he goes on to say this, just as it, would fulfill, it was uh, fulfilled and written the law, they hated me with no reason. So Jesus then backs it up with the scripture. He says, guys, there's a scripture that says they're going to hate me without any real reason. Because the simple fact is that men love darkness rather than light. And their deeds are evil. So when you recognize that, when you see that, and you understand Jesus was preparing his disciples and us today with that. He says, listen, you're going into a world that is, of course, ruled by the enemy. It has certain things and components to it, like, of course, pride, pleasure, possession. And you yourself have a basic need of security, self-esteem, and significance. And the enemy is going to try to exploit that. Also as well, because you have aligned yourself with me, there's going to be a natural uh, tension, a natural propensity for them to heat you. I've had that happen. One time, I was helping one of the young ladies from our church move. Unfortunately, she had asked a friend to come and help her. And as soon as that friend saw me, he instantly hated me. And she pointed that out uh, later after we had moved. She says, as soon as he saw you, he, she hated you. And you never said a word to him. Just instantly he hated you. And she says, we all know why. That's because he was of the realm of the enemy and I was of the realm of God. So we need to recognize that and we need to be prepared for that. Not everybody's going to be happy that you are a follower of Jesus Christ. More than likely, it is going to be the opposite. So recognize that. So Jesus said, they hated me without reason. So if they're going to hate Jesus, who was the perfect man, the perfect personification of what God was all about, then don't be surprised when they reject you and hate you as well. Father, this is both a warning and also as well an encouragement. Lord, we need to recognize that we are not 
in of this world, I should say. We are in this world, but we are not of this world. So we shouldn't really be surprised when someone, for whatever reason, dislikes us, scorns us, mocks us. Lord uh, uses our Savior's name in a derogatory or blasphemous manner. We should not be surprised. Father, I'm not saying that we should walk around with a martyr's mentality, that we're not to walk around with a victim mentality. Lord, the world hates me, so Lord, take me home. No, we are to be aware of that, and we are to walk into this world knowing that we are representatives of Jesus Christ. And because we are representatives of Jesus Christ, we can do the same things that he did. Mark chapter 16, verses 15 through 18 says, These signs will follow them who believe. Father, we want your works to be exhibited and demonstrated in our lives. Like the old song says, Lord, in my life be glorified. With that thought in mind, Lord, today, we step out with confidence. We step out with a desire. We step out, Lord, with your direction today in our lives. Lord, today, in our lives, be glorified. So, Father, that's the cry of our heart. So, right now, Lord, do that. And in this time and place of prayer, Father, we're going to pray for people. We're going to pray today that, Lord, whether their need is physical, spiritual, emotional, intellectual, financial, or family, you are going to hear and answer prayer right now. Father, this is that moment. This is that moment that, Lord, we are going to claim Jehovah Jireh, that being Philippians chapter 4, verse number 19, and 1 Peter 2, 24, which is a reemphasis of Isaiah 53, verse number 5. In both scriptures, Lord, it talks about healing and provision. We pray for your healing touch. We pray for your provision right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, supply every need, especially as we are on the first day of the month and mortgages and rents are available and need to be paid. So Lord, help us to do that. Lord, as well, throughout this week, this week and this month, Lord, may you meet every need. And Father, for those that need healing right now in the name of Jesus, bring that healing touch. Restore your people right now. Father, whether it's ourselves or we're standing in the gap today as a proxy for somebody else, Lord, bring that healing touch. You healed us by your stripes, and we're claiming it now in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, let's close our time off today with, of course, Jesus. My Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there is none like you. All of my days, I want to praise the wonders of your mighty love. My comfort, my shelter, tower of refuge and strength. Let it
want to thank you so much for joining me today. And if you happen to be in the greater Edmonton area or St. Elder, I'd love to have you join us for our service today. We meet at Cornerstone Hall, that's number 6 Tache Street in St. Elder. Our doors open at 1045 and our service starts at 11 a.m. And we would love to have you join us for that service. So, Father, thank you today for this wonderful opportunity. And we ask your blessing upon each one, Lord, who has watched and ask a very special touch on them today. In Jesus' name, amen. My name is Robert Dean Steele. Thank you for joining me today, and God bless.